Okay, this is the final installment of the Voltage Booster Project I've been working on for several weeks, on and off. Um, I'm not going to go over too much uh, about what it does or anything. I think the prior videos kind of speak for itself, but I will show you. I've got it hooked up to a battery. Uh, this is a lithium battery. This is my first lithium battery I've ever owned. Uh, this is a Nermac 10 amp from Amazon. Absolutely fantastic. Um, very late to the game in lithium batteries, but I'm um, very impressed. I left this, in order to get this battery down to 12.87, I left the radio on all night long, believe it or not. And it really hasn't gone down much. But uh, just amazing. Anyway, like I said, I'm late to the game on lithiums. But anyway, uh, prior videos, uh, voltage booster takes low voltage, 10 volts, I think all the way down to like maybe 8.5 volts or whatever, and boosts it up to 13.8 instantly because... It's hooked into a, a switching network, which we'll get into, that uh, only activates this thing when the push-to-talk is keyed. And it's activated by the, uh, the send output on the radio, the center pin. Just ignore this. This is going to the, the shield of this pin. But this, this red wire, or the blue wire, goes in the red wire, and it's the center pin of uh, the phono jack on the back of the radio. Almost all radios have that key amplifier. But uh, like I said, I won't go over, but I will give you just a quick demonstration again. This, again, this is running on a battery. This is a 10 amp lithium battery. Um, don't, can't run the radio at full power, 100 watts, because I'm limited by a little rinky dink uh, 60 watt uh, dummy load. And uh, yeah, so let me give you just a short, and I've been, let me just say this, I've been running this for about two and a half weeks so far. I've got this bolted to the back of the, uh, the, uh, the case that I, I keep the radio in, I haven't turned it off in two and a half weeks, whether it's plugged into the car or what, I just let it run all the time. There's no reason to turn it off and I can find no reason not to run it. You know, it's one of those things that it's just, there's all benefit and no, no downside that I can see. I don't know what it is. It, it doesn't, it doesn't get hot because it only comes on during transmit. And, uh, other than the relays clicking, you know, that doesn't really bother me. But uh, other than that, you know, I don't see why you wouldn't do this, and I'll show you right now. And uh, I'm going to put a link, hopefully right here in the video, to a video that S Steve Ellington did about the ICOM 7300 and the problems it has when you get uh, the voltage below a certain level. His more refers to CW mode, but uh, it's applicable to uh, single sideband also. Anyway, let me show you. Like I said, I've done this in prior videos, but I just, I'll just i go over it again because a lot of people don't understand. Okay. All right, we're on here. Like I said, we're at 60 watts, sideband, and the booster is enabled. It's plugged in. Okay, let's watch over here. You'll see it never gets below 13.8. Uh, All right, now let's go over here. We'll go back here. We'll unplug it. Like I said, that's at 60 watts. At 100 watts, it'll easily dip below 11 or 12 volts. So, uh, and these radios will not put out full output power in the 11 volt range. At least the 7200 won't. I don't believe this. The uh, watch the video I, I said I'd link to. It'll give you a little bit more description of what these radios will do when the voltage is low. Anyway, the main reason I want to make this video is in the description of this video, I'll put a link to. Uh, I redrew the schematic last night, and uh, there's a parts list. Again, you got the booster, and then, you know, it's like 40 bucks. Um, and then the parts, less than $7. Very easy. Very cheap mod. And like I said, I haven't turned mine off. It's been running for, uh, for uh, you know, probably almost three weeks now. I mean, I just leave it on all the time. But uh, anyway, I'll see you this deal. Thanks.